Let us rise and begin our service with the ringing of the church bell. between you and the woman. And between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. and the power and the kingdom of our God and our authority of his Christ have come. Jesus, offspring of a woman, by your death and resurrection, you defeated Satan, our accuser, and overcame the darkness of sin. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only begotten Son 
to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Let us pray together. Let the incense of our repentant prayers rise before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify your name forever and ever. Amen. Please. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 12, beginning with the first verse. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. O Lord, have mercy on us. God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2, beginning with the 36th verse. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you've crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord your God will call. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. Please rise. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Lord, 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 who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, sought her under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell.
Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The promised life. Now, I don't know about you, but about a week ago, well, maybe a little bit more a week ago, Monday before Thanksgiving, uh, there was a selective power outage in my neighborhood, which, by the way, is frustrating. When you go out the back and your neighbor behind you has power, and the neighbor to the but you know, frustrating. And it, it was the night before we were getting ready to go to Michigan. And I put a candle in the middle of our living room, and it lit the whole room. And it was kind of amazing from the standpoint that that small candle, that light that you see there on a candle, illuminated the room enough for us to do whatever we needed to do. And you take for granted, by the way, all the lights that we have like here in the church. But that simple little single light lit the room bright enough for everything. And one of the things about that single light, the light of promise that we talk about tonight, is it breaks the darkness. It destroys the darkness. One thing about the darkness is you don't know what's out there. You just don't know. You don't know what's out there. And that causes fear. And, and darkness brings that, that kind of mystique of fear to us. And that single light breaks the darkness. Well, so also is the light of promise. That is to say, the light of Christ. You know, it's amazing. Kathy and I were looking at some uh, videos for this week in terms of the Christmas holiday. And I was looking at one that really it just stuck in my mind. The concept that, very simply, the darkness of the world existed. And in one small moment, at the birth of Christ, the promised light came. A light that was, to many, very dim in the manger was a light that brightened all the darkness. The promised light of Jesus. And as we hear in Isaiah, your sun will no longer set nor your moon wane, for you will have the Lord an everlasting light. And then also from St. John's Gospel, then Jesus again spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. The promised light that has come. The light that cuts through the darkness. The light that makes all things new again. You know, I, I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I used to be quick up the stairs in the basement when they shut the light off. And even to this day, I can't explain to you why. But I could have been down in the basement working for I don't know how long, but if the light got shut off, before I got to the top of the stairs, I dropped it down a couple of years just to get up a little faster. The mystique of the darkness for all of us can overtake us. And the fact is, all you had to do was turn the light on. And it changed everything. Right? I distinctly remember my grandfather. Whenever we were going up north to go hunting, it'd be early in the morning. He used to flick the light on and off at the bottom of the stairs because it's up in the basement. And you know, eventually, if you're asleep, that light is going to wake you up. Right? Now, he added some you know, sounds and he called it some names. But, but the point is, that light was the motivating factor. Because if we called back up to him that we were awake, what would he do? Shut the light off until we didn't come up. Then he would turn the light back on. And that's the way Christ is for many people. Christ becomes convenient for them, right? Christ becomes the light that they only need when they need Christ. But yet for us, those who believe in Jesus as the Lord and Savior, those who have been blessed with the Holy Spirit, we understand that Christ is the light for all times. He cuts all darkness, and he is that promised light, the light that we see, the light that we believe in, and the light, by the way, that leads us on our path. As you carry through this Advent season, as we look at the lights of candles in the Advent wreath, we have to remember the promised light, the light of promise, which is Christ, the one who takes away all darkness, who illuminates the darkness. You know, I, I love the evening prayer liturgy, you know, let your light scatter the darkness and illumine church. Let the light scatter the darkness, but illumine your church. And that is the light of Christ. The light that only Christ can do. A light that brings to the believer hope for tomorrow. A light to the believer that brings faith in the promise of salvation. A light that directs our path and guides our way. Let that light be the promised joy of your life this Advent season. As you remember the truth of the, the light of promise, who is the light of Christ. And God's people said together, Amen. Amen. As God the Father.
gives us his son, God the Son, who gives us his life and death, and may God the Holy Spirit continue to bless, guide, lead, and strengthen you, both now and forevermore. Amen. We worship the Lord with our offerings. Let us together rise for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and their praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all those who lay their offerings before your altar, O Lord, and give service to your name, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us, let us pray to the Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear us as we pray in his name as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.